So after four Paranormal Activity films, uh, they decided to uh, take advantage of the popularity of the franchise within the Latino community and um, do a spin-off film <laughs> centered around a, a Latino uh, a cast. And but and I thought, oh well, this will go off in some other story uh, that's only tangentially connected. Uh, perhaps an, uh, another entity or whatever, or it would ultimately involve uh, this uh, dark uh, coven that's behind all of this uh, you know, demonic possession stuff. And, and, and uh, at, at the most. Um, but no, <laughs> this one is a far more direct sequel uh, than even the previous one. Uh, even though, you know, Katie and Hunter show up in that and all that, you know, you know well, where's where's she been all this time and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, but this one is actually a more of a sequel to um, the the second uh, film, and uh, goes into far more than I would have thought. You know, I I was interested in the franchise, so I went into it. It's just like this thing of saying, you know, we want to target a certain group and and that sort of thing, when you already apparently had achieved it anyway. <laughs> Uh, and uh, to, to refer to this as an offshoot or spinoff, I just don't think works at all. I think it's this was Paranormal Activity Five, um, and because the the first four, that's it. There's no extra titles or anything like that. And then all of a sudden they do this, and then the final film, or at least was supposed to be the final film, uh, you know, gets a title as well rather than uh, a number. So I, I don't know. I, I, it was always a bit odd in that. But, uh, but anyway, uh, so you're introduced to uh, more new characters, uh, pr primarily this young man, and they live in this apartment complex. And they're just goofy young people and having fun and all this type of stuff. Uh, meanwhile, there's something sinister going on. And they, they spy on a neighbor, and there's this naked woman in there who very lovely and then another naked woman who isn't <laughs> but a mysterious ritual takes place uh, one of their uh, former uh, uh, classmates seems to be in all kinds of trouble and uh, he has a sinister warning for our main uh, protagonist here uh, and already you're seeing well he's possessed by something and as they delve into this and discover all kinds of secrets and whatnot, uh, he becomes the next target of it. And uh, they do go into a lot more. There's a lot more uh, special effects here as he seems to be developing superpowers. <laughs> and he thinks it's cool at first, and then, uh-oh, <laughs> it's the demon slowly taking him over. And, there, it, you know, I was talking about how the franchise seemed to... Uh, get weaker as it went on i gotta take that back this one is not that bad it's pretty good uh and just uh, the, the characters uh, figuring this out they know nothing about it you know they have no connection with the previous people uh and then one of them shows up you have Allie from the second movie she's the only survivor of that one and she's the one who was trying to figure out what was going on and she you know sort of stumbles on it and then you would make sense that later on, you know, she's like, yeah, this is what happens. This is what this is about. And you got to, you know, you got to watch out for it. And um, unfortunately, her warning has come too late. But it's one of those things is like, yeah, wouldn't that happen? <laughs> and it's almost like you should have had more uh, in this direction where you had some returning characters and more interest on these events uh, for an overall uh, narrative. Uh, but then it really gets dropped uh, for the final film. And then the, the latest one they did for, for Paramount Plus that I refer to as PP after what they did to Star Trek <laughs> um, goes off in this other, and it's not, it's no good. And, and uh, just, yeah, no. <laughs> so I, I don't know what the thinking was and why that was uh, so difficult to achieve. Um, but. But anyway, you, you, you get this one and you revisit old sites of the previous films. Um, and uh, the, the, the Dark Coven shows up again and, and all this sort of thing. And 
it's just an amazing thing where it, you end up in time travel <laughs> with this stuff. And, uh, you know, they give nods and whatnot to the, the possibilities of these uh, supernatural uh, forces. And, uh, and ultimately, the, the guy with the camera. <laughs> and in this case, did they really? That's probably the big weaker one. When I talk about found footage, you have to establish why the camera is on. Now, at the, at the outset, there are young people who want to record all kinds of stuff, and okay, and uh, but ultimately, I, the give here or the you know the pass would be at the end. Uh, well, you need the light of the camera, and that's what this guy is doing. The one lone survivor, the buddy of the main guy who is possessed. Uh, that's uh, what he's doing. And uh, so, okay, the, the rest of it is it's pretty damn good that, you know, I'm kind of like, yeah, would they really keep the camera going, you know? And, I, and some of this, I am not so certain. Uh, but, you know, it kind of works on its own anyway. Because <laughs> it's pretty good as, as the story unfolds. And uh, they can't save their friend. Everyone's doomed all the time. <laughs> I guess little Allie, she's still out there. <laughs> she survived. <laughs> and I suspect she still has the dog, so I guess it survived too. <laughs> uh, but uh, but the time travel element uh, was, uh, it, they're in the old house, the old grandma's house. I'm assuming, of course, she's gone by now. <laughs> uh, and the, 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 the witches are there, and then they, the uh, the gangsters accompany them with shotguns <laughs> and there's a battle and all this stuff and uh, then he gets chased by the demon possessed uh, friend and ends up finding this door with all the markings on it that they had discovered suggested that you could travel to other dimensions and even through time uh, in this door and he has no other means of escape so he goes through the door and then suddenly he's in another place, you know, and it, and it seems like, oh, he's in another part of the building. This is another house. And, oh, boy, there's something familiar about this house. It's the house from the original first film. He's gone back in time at the moment that fully possessed Katie uh, murders Mika. And you see the murder, you know, and it's, <laughs> I didn't expect to see Katie again. You know, I mean, I figured, oh, man, after Paranormal 4, uh, that was it. And uh, I was happy to see her. <laughs> but there she is. Uh, that's the thing. And then he's all freaked out about what happened here. And then he runs into his demon-possessed friend who uh, kills him. So this would suggest that this happened, but you didn't see it. You, you At the end of the first movie, you're, you're in the bedroom. You're not in the kitchen. But this other guy who's also possessed, is he possessed by the same demon? Or is it another demon? You know, I... <laughs> And that's the thing. They don't really answer this in the later film. They don't pursue it any further. Um, and what, you know, was time travel? Did this change things? I, you know, I but it didn't, didn't really delve into any of that either. Uh, so you just have to assume that, you know, why you heard Mika screaming and stuff, and then suddenly Katie shows up and dumps his, throws his body at the camera, you know. Um, the other demon guy, I guess, went back through the time door. I don't know. <laughs> him and Katie hang out? Was he helping him? <laughs> Did he go back to the coven and they, oh, oh, boy, one of these guys time traveled. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but but it was just interesting in the directions it went and stuff it was laying out that could have been pursued, but just wasn't. Uh, but it's a cool run. But uh, I don't know. They just didn't know what to do with it uh, following that. Uh, that's too bad. But anyway, uh, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, uh, it's pretty good. I think it's fine in and of itself. And that's kind of the thing. Like I talked about Paranormal Activity 3, I think, kind of lost the narrative there that they had already established in the first two. Um, and yet, unto itself, it's not bad. So, you know, it is what it is. Again. <laughs> 